honestly, I found the spiritual, the spiritual healing um, within myself because I stopped burlesque. Okay. I completely stopped. You know, the world shut down. So I actually had the time to heal because I was going full throttle with burlesque and inter- in performances. I still had that stripper mentality of do what you got to do, work through the pain, get this money. Mm -hmm. And when I decided to stop, you know, performing, I mean, the world decided for me, Um, (laughs) but (laughs) it was the little things that I started finding that I was doing in burlesque that I loved. I was playing dress up. I was creating characters. Um, A lot of my characters are, you know, I have some in the kink community, I'm called Lady London. You know, I'm a lady. You know, I dress like a lady. I dress in my, you know, my stepper white dresses. And, you know, I'm a lady and I'm having a fun time and I'm having a tea party. And I realized I'm doing things like a little would do. And I'm Mm -hmm. putting them in my performances. And I started having tea parties, you know, with my friends and after that, I just, I, Jasmine invited me to be a submissive for her. And after that, you know, I've gotten flogged every now and then, you know, I've gotten spanked, but to be an actual bottom for a substantial amount of time and to be put into a subspace because I was on cloud 1000, <laughs> mm-hmm. I was there. I was like, oh, okay, let me start looking into what this is and why I love it. So then I started learning about age regression and, you know, um, little space and subspace and all the things that I'm doing that are naturally healing for me. So I honestly, I didn't even move my body anymore, which is typically something that I do. I move, I stretch, but I, I, my physically, I felt so paralyzed that the only thing I can do was catered to my mentality, my mental health and my spiritual health. And the only way I was able to do that was to have tea parties and not just with my friends, but, you know, setting up an altar and speaking with my ancestors and having tea with them and speaking about my day and, you know, reflecting and, you know, doing the shadow work on myself. And for those who don't know what shadow work is looking at your darkest side of yourself and holding parts of yourself accountable, but also healing it, not just pushing it to the back of your mind or pushing it for another day to deal with it, deal with it right now. And Mm -hmm. at that moment I said, oh, I have something. And then I started, you know, I created an afternoon tease party where we play house, you know, we play dress up, We have tea parties, we color, we do any type of arts and craft, and we write down intentions. And then we also write down the things that we want to release. And with that energy, we move and we do um, any type of sensual movement to help move that energy to release any trauma. Because that is initially what I did to help heal myself, is to put myself in a little space, but also embrace my sensual space and my subspace at the same time. So you've mentioned the word little space uh, a few times. Is that like an age regression thing? Yes. Um, so okay. when I go into little space, I'm age regressing, to, age regressing to around the ages of four and seven. Okay. And do you feel like that, that do you feel like that works for you because that was like a safe time in your life or is it the opposite and you want to reclaim and re-experience that the way that you should have at that age? Does that question make sense? Yeah, it makes complete sense. And it's actually a safe space in my time. I've never experienced sexual trauma or any type of trauma, you know, Mm -hmm. between the ages of four and seven. And I could really say eight years old, but it's really a age of four and seven. And that is the safest time for me. That's the only time I know like the truest form of happiness for me. And you said that you were able to reach that through uh, being submissive, right? Yes. I was able to, honestly, when I do like, cause I am a non-sexual um, little But my Mm -hmm. other identities as a submissive is a kitten and princess, you know, so but 
when I realized that I was a little, it was the type of performances that I would do and the type mm-hmm. of things that I would do. Like, I love playing dress up. That is one of my favorite favorite things. Alice in Wonderland is my favorite Disney movie. And I love recreating a performance that is based around Disney movies and or any type of cartoon that's my favorite. I love creating those type of performances. And it's so funny when I actually am in a performance space. um, A lot of my co-stars, I like to call them co-stars, with me, they realize that I turned into something different. You know, my voice becomes smaller and you become very adorable. And I'm just like, yeah, because I'm happy right now. I'm in, I'm in my little space. You know, I'm not fully there, but I'm kind of peeking at it. <laughs> it's interesting because it makes me think about, I, you know, I, I had a great childhood and I, um, I, rem- I so often, especially now that I have a toddler, I think back upon like the magic that we saw the world in, you know, and how just we, the world was so different and your imagination was really all you needed. And just everything was, was extra sparkly and how amazing it would be to capture that feeling again. And I had an issue with um, alcohol for a long time. I've been sober for a few years now. And I, and I, I think about it a lot and I think about, I wonder if part of actually, in fact, I really do think that part of my, you know, desire to drink so much was trying to capture that magic back, you know, that I had in childhood. So you talking about this makes, makes sense to me. Do you think that, that discovering it through submissive work was because, because I also like when I, if I gauge in any BDSM play, I'm also a submissive. Um, is that just having all of those layers of like control and adulting stripped away from you? You know, all those things that we have to do when we're grown up and having somebody else in control, it kind of gave you that freedom to find that space again, where you kind of were in the same situation, just in terms of not having responsibilities and not having to make decisions and stuff like that. That's exactly what it is to be able to safely give control to somebody. Like Mm -hmm. I'm literally saying, I don't want to do anything. I don't Mm want to think for myself. I don't want to feed myself. I don't want to do anything. I just want to exist in my mm-hmm. femininity, some way, somehow, just allow me to exist and spoil me the way I see fit. And it's, again, it's that feeling safe enough to do that. You mm-hmm. know, when I had my first um, pro sub experience, and honestly, my first like real sub experience with Jasmine and King, everything made sense. <laughs> everything made sense, the communication, the setting the boundaries, the setting the intentions, the making sure that the paddles or the flogs are good. Like, okay, how does this feel? Does it feel good? Oh, you don't like that? Okay, we're not even going to touch that when it comes to you. Mm-hmm. you. You, They did not go past. I didn't even have to say a safe word or do a safe movement. And I I do put my hand up and do a safe movement because the music was very loud. So she's like, we're not going to be able to hear you. So put your hands up. So if, if anything, they never went past my pain threshold. I felt, and I was up there for 90 minutes <laughs> with heels on, standing up, getting flogged. And... I was in such a safe space that the pain from my ankles didn't even feel like anything. It -hmm. wasn't until afterwards we were done. It was like, oh, oh, I was standing. (laughs) I was standing Mm -hmm. in heels for a minute. And it's just that I allowed them to have full control over my body. And I haven't done that with anybody, especially after my um, my trauma, to allow somebody to take over like that. I didn't have that kind of trust. And it felt good to know that there are people out there that I can trust and that there are more people out there that I can trust if we allow ourselves to have that communication, set those boundaries, talk about triggers. Talk about traumas that may trigger you in this field because 
for me, there's a lot of things in here that mimic a lot of things that I went through. And Mm -hmm. if I am able to speak about those things to somebody before it becomes a thing, or if it does become a thing, they know exactly how to handle me without blaming me or just throwing me away and saying she's just too hard to deal with. Mm 